welcome to a video in my new series, Three Steps to Photoshop Heaven. Three key steps to kickstart your journey on becoming a Photoshop guru. Now step one is layers. Now layers are the building blocks of the Photoshop file, making them one of Photoshop's most important and powerful tools. It's important that you understand how to work with them. So buckle up and let's get started. Well here we can see I've got an image open, uh, this is a, a stately home, it's called Temple Newsome. And if we look over to the right here we can see that we've got the layers panel and at the moment it's docked with channels in the side dock. I'm just going to go up to the tab and I'm going to drag it out just so we can see it as a separate entity. And there it is. And I just want to look at a bit of anatomy of the layers panel for you. Now the first thing you'll notice is that we've, we've obviously got a layer and it's here it's called the background layer and it's got a little padlock on and that means surprisingly enough that it's locked and it means that this background layer is the bottom layer so if you've got another 20 layers on top of it you cannot put anything underneath it that's the bottom layer in the stack. If we want to turn that into an ordinary layer then we've got to get rid of that padlock and we can do that a couple of different ways we can either just click on it or if you want we can drag it and drop it in the bin. Either way we'll get you back to an, an ordinary layer with no padlock on. And now if you want we can rename a layer. At the moment it's called layer naught. If I double click exactly where the name is and I'll type stately home and then I'll click underneath now you can see I've renamed it, but also the colour's gone out of it. It's now not blue anymore. And that means it's not active. And it's important to know that if a layer is active, then things can happen on it. You can draw on it, you can paint on it, you can do all that kind of thing. If it's not active, you can't. So if I go and look at, I've got a paintbrush now, and I try and do something on this image, it's it won't let me. I've got that little no entry sign. So what I've got to do to make this editable is to click on it to make it active and you can see it goes blue and now I've got my brush I can actually paint on this layer if I wanted. If you just look at this side here we've got the little eyeball and that's the visibility eye and what that does is if I click on it it makes the layer invisible so it's still active but it's invisible and if I click on that again it brings it back again. OK, let's go up to the top here and we'll have a look at the filter bar at the top. Here we can filter by different types of layers. When you're building up composite documents in Photoshop, you, you can often be faced with, you know, 50, 100 layers. So it's useful sometimes just to be able to whittle it down and just view a certain type of layer. So in here we, we can search for the kind of layer, we can search for layer and by name. We can search for a layer that's got a particular effect on it, like a drop shadow. That's got a particular blend mode, typical attribute, colour, if it's a smart object or if it's selected. And then here we've got some more specifics. So here if I look for that, it's, a, it's basically that's just searching for pixel layers. This one's going to search and show me any adjustment layers. This is going to search and show me any type layers, any shape layers, and any smart objects. And this little switch at the end, that switches the whole shooting match on and off. OK, going down a little bit, what we've got here is the blend modes. And if I click this little arrow here next to normal, here we've got a list of the blend modes. And we can start off with the dark and blend modes in these top section. We've got light and blend modes. We've got what they call overlay and contrast adjusting blend modes. And we've got some arty ones, which if I'm honest, you don't use an awful lot. But basically blend modes are the way that we can, we can affect how different layers react with each other. But I've only got one layer here, so I can't really show you that at the moment, but we'll be doing later. And then we've got the opacity. And by clicking and dragging this little slider, I can change the opacity of the layer. So I can make it more opaque or less opaque. And if I drop it right down to zero, you'll see it disappears altogether. You've got this checkerboard pattern 
and this checkerboard pattern is called transparency. It's basically you can see through it. It's like a piece of acetate. Okay, we'll put that back up to 100. And underneath it, we've got fill. And what fill does is exactly the same as opacity, or it looks as though it is. And it is. But if you've got any, what they call effects on, and we'll be going into effects a little bit later, if you've got any effects, then the fill will not affect the effects. It will not affect the effects. I think. I think that's right. Anyway. So, so basically, it's very sim it's very similar effect, that, except that it won't affect if you've got anything like a drop shadow or anything, or something like that. So, if you wanted to drop the opacity of the layer, but you didn't want to affect a drop shadow, which is an effect, then you would use the fill slider rather than the opacity slider. Okay, down to the bottom of the layers panel. If we start here at the right hand side, we've got the trash can, which is obviously like the dustbin, and it's for getting rid of things, for deleting things. And we can drag things over the trash can and just drop it in. Or you can right click on a layer and select delete layer. Now I know you can't see that because it shoots off the top of the screen. But there is an entry for delete layer in that menu. Next one along, we've got adding a new layer or creating a new layer as it says here. And on this one, if we click it, we can make a new empty layer, which is brilliant. And we can move that because we've now got rid of the padlock. If we want, we could drag that and drop it underneath. And I could drag that and drop it back. And if we want to delete a layer, then I'm going to click on the layer. And again, I can drag it over the trash can and drop it in there. Or I can right click it and I'll click delete layer. It'll bring a little dialog box say, do I want to delete layer one? And I say, yes, I do. OK, moving along, we've got groups. And this creates a new group. And these are just like folders in which you can put several layers. So if I click on that, you can see I've got group one. And this little disclosure triangle at the side, it's telling you whether it's open or closed. So if it's pointing down, it means the group's open. And of course, there's nothing in it. So if I click that to put it sideways like that that group is now closed so let's add another layer if we put another layer at the top of the stack there we go so that's now sitting on top of the group if i now click and drag that and just wait till i get a line going all the way around the outside of the group like that and drop it in that layer is now inside the group so if i click that little disclosure triangle to open the group you'll see that that is now inside the group. So sometimes you can put a lot of similar things all together in one group to really tidy up your layer stack. I'll just close that again, open it, and then if I want to get rid of that, I can click it and drag it over the trash can to delete it. And I can also get rid of the group by clicking and dragging that over the trash. Okay, next along, we've got adjustment layers this little black and white circle and if i click on that these are all the adjustments you've got but they're totally non-destructive they're on an adjustment layer so let's see how that works if i click on levels for instance you can see i've got the properties panel comes up with the the levels histogram in it but in the layers panel you see i've got an adjustment which is this little piece here and we've got a little mask on it as well but this is an adjustment layer so now if I make any adjustments, you'll see that they're actually affecting the underlying image. And that's great, that's what I want. But it's not actually affecting the pixels, it's totally non-destructive. So if I now go to the visibility eye and turn that off, you can see I go back to my original image. So now I've got, in effect, this is like a filter. So I'm putting a filter on and I can turn that filter on and off, but I'm not actually changing any of the image pixels, which is brilliant. OK, so I'll drag that and drop that in the bin. And next along, we've got masking. Again, masking, if I click on that, it actually puts me a mask on. And basically what we can do is we, we can either hide or reveal pixels rather than delete them. And we paint on the mask and we know the mask is active because it's got this little line around it. 
So I'll just show you the difference. If I click on the image, you see now the image is active and the mask isn't. When you're painting with black and white on a mask, you must make sure the mask is active. Otherwise you're painting with black paint on your image and you'll make a mess. So I'm going to click to make sure that mask is active. I'll just get rid of the properties panel so you can see. I'll get a paintbrush and then I'll select black as my foreground colour and now I'm going to start painting on the mask. Now I don't mean paint on the mask just here, I mean paint on the image but because the mask is active I'm actually painting on the mask if you see what I mean. And if I click and drag you'll see a black line appear and this is where I painted with black and what it's done is it's made those pixels invisible so I can now see through underneath them. Now we could have done this with erase, we could have erased these pixels but then what happens next week if I've changed my mind? Once I've saved this image I've now saved it with a hole in. Whereas what I want to do is something basically a lot cleverer. So what I can do is I can save this out now and it will save this mask with it. So if next week someone looks at this and says oh ooh, I wish he hadn't done that there's a big hole in this picture now you can say no problem I have a mask and whereas painting black erases the pixels or, or hides the pixels sorry if I paint with white it puts them back again because I've not actually erased them I've just made them invisible so we can actually paint pixels in and paint pixels out absolutely magic okay we'll just drop that mask in the bin and it'll ask me do I want to apply it well no I don't I want to delete it so there it goes next in line we've got the effects panel and these are things like the drop shadow it's all the blending options bevel and emboss if we want to put a stroke on where you've got drop shadows and outer glow pattern overlay a whole host of things we can do to, to basically to images and to text and then finally we've got the link icon now if I hover over it there's nothing happens now I get that no entry sign because I, I basically I, there's nothing to link what the link icons doing is I'm going to link layers together so let's give it some extra layers I'll go to my layers create a new layer icon and I'll click a couple of times so I've got an extra two layers and it still won't let me link because I've got to select the layers that I want to link together because they may not be next to each other so I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on the bottom layer and there we've now selected all three layers and if I now go down to my link icon and click on that you can see a link appears so now all these three layers are linked together so whatever I do to one it will happen to all the others and if I want to unlink I've just got to make sure that all the layers that are linked are selected and go down and click the unlink button okay we'll just get rid of these layers that I don't want I'll click on that one and drag it in the bin and I'll click on that one and drag that in the bin and the final part I want to show you is the flyout menu and that's up in this top right hand corner and if I click this little icon here you get a whole host of menu options and you can make new layers you can copy layers you can duplicate layers you can make new groups you can do all that good stuff but three that are really useful that you use a lot is for merging down layers merging visible layers together or flattening an image if you've finished with your layers and you want to flatten the image so you want to save it out as a JPEG then you can flatten the image and this will make the, the file much smaller it will compress it okay well that's it for our tour of the layers panel thank you so much for watching if you want to see more videos on learning Photoshop or Lightroom please visit my website kenfisherphotography.com on my YouTube channel, Live Link Training. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.